So, Will, you gonna do this collab? Will? <sighs> Fine, have it your way. But, I'll keep interrupting every Overlooked Writers video until you do accept my request. Because, as we all know, Americans are assholes, and I'm an American. <sighs> Fine. Fine. So... You want to do a Who's Overlooked Writers episode on the Capaldi era? Alright, I'll bite. This is really far outside of my comfort zone for Doctor Who, but whatever. Who do you have in mind? Sarah Dollard. Oh. Alright then. I can deal with that. Introductions on you then. This video is about why Sarah Dollard was awesome for Doctor Who, and how she deserves way more kudos than that. Editor, cue opening credits! Sarah Dollard wrote two scripts for the revival run of Doctor Who, both of them tailor-made for Peter Capaldi's period as the Twelfth Doctor. The first of them was Face the Raven, airing as episode 10 of series 9 in 2015, the revival's 10th anniversary year. Dollard returned to pen Thin Ice two years later in 2017, and it secured itself quite snugly as the third episode of series 10. Both of these stories were produced during the second half of Stephen Moffat's 80,000 years in the showrunner scene. Alright, you can cut the facetious and lies, Will. Stephen Moffat was not showrunner for 8,000 years. He was showrunner for 125,672 and a half years. Fair enough. Well, why don't you get the ball rolling while I don my critical thinking hat? Why, thank you. Dollard, in my opinion, is the second best Peter Capaldi era writer, just ever so slightly behind the legend himself, Jamie Matheson. Dollard wrote two very important episodes in Capaldi's era. Her episode in Series 9 saw the umpteenth departure of Jenna Coleman as Clara Oswald, and her other script was a hard-hitting anti-racism story. My perspective on her writing is that she seems to like crafting fantasy settings in both episodes, with a clear rip of Diagon Alley and Face the Raven, and while not in a flat-out fantasy setting, Thin Ice has a fantasy feel to the script and even the directing. Probably because it's the Great Frost Fairs, which makes it feel like a winter wonderland. Perhaps. Perhaps. Now that my dear friend who has the wrong classic Who opinions, what are your thoughts on her style of writing of her two scripts? Yeah, Dollar's writing strikes a strange chord for me personally, but that's not necessarily in a bad way per se. But before I elaborate on that, allow me to paint a picture for how I perceive her creative direction. You see, different writers seem to specialise in different areas. You get your more plot-focused writers like your Stephen Moffat's or your Robert Holmes who, while they are certainly capable of delivering in other areas, they tend to give greater attention to detail on how the mechanics of the story works, or keeping the narrative moving. But you've also got your more thematically orientated scribes in the vein of Rona Monroe or Christopher H. Bidmead, who are, again, undeniably skilled in other areas, but their number one priority appears appears to be the story's ultimate tone, moral, or idea. Sarah Dollard's strengths, meanwhile, seem to be more in exploring the thought processes of our main characters and how they interact with each other, as well as establishing a setting to let them bask in, akin to the likes of Russell T Davies or fellow Overlooked writer Neil Cross. Stay tuned on that one. Again, that doesn't mean she slacks off on everything else, but they're certainly the elements which get the most prominence in both of her episodes if you ask me. And it's a very commendable angle to take, especially if you consider what was being asked of her. Like, in Face the Raven's case, she was put in charge of what was essentially the nail in the coffin for the Doctor and Clara's oblique, controversial, and toxic by design relationship, as well as the literal killing blow for Clara herself, the companion of the last three series. That's a staggeringly huge ask for a writer's debut episode on the show. And while not as earth-shatteringly pivotal, Thin Ice serves to further flesh out the budding dynamic between the Doctor and Bill, giving them a couple of ideological differences to butt heads over and try to move past. 
Handing off these vital character beats to a creative newcomer to this lore is quite a daring move, and I respect Dollard for taking these opportunities and running with them. One personal idea that I have for Dollar's writing is that even the most alien of characters have a human feel to them. I feel this is a problem in Face the Raven as throughout the episode we see aliens go from alien-like into humans. And as someone who loves human-looking sci-fi, this is a positive for me. Another positive, in my opinion, is Dollar's writing of 12 and whoever his companion is. At some point, after Bill saw that kid die in thin ice, instead of going straight back to work, they established that Bill needed a minute to recover from watching that kid get brutally sucked into the ice. In this moment, we explore the darker and more detached dimensions of the Twelfth Doctor personality from Bill's perspective, which she is understandably disturbed by. And while the Doctor convinces her that there is a time and a place for this, there are moments threaded throughout the rest of the episode where Bill reconciles on how much of a good man he strives to be and just how passionate he is about it, and the lingering character drama throughout the episode itself is beautiful. Now, Leah Simp, what is the fan consensus on Sarah Dollard's two scripts? Ah, a good question. I dunno. What do you mean? Well, I mean, this would usually be the part where I consult the DWM 2014 poll to gauge what the masses think, but um, both of Dollard's episodes came out after that poll was made, so uh, I don't know. I can't just assume that Yal Capaldi stands give 10 out of 10s to every single thing he's in anyway. Fine, I'll do it. Consensus of Dollard's work seems to be overall pretty positive when you analyze reviews or online discourse. Thin Ice garnered a generally positive reception ranging from a 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb and a 94% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and IGN gave an 8.2 score. Face the Raven scored similarly positively, with those websites and publications are drawn an 8.5, an 80%, and 8.4 respectively. So I guess some people like her work then, huh? I suppose so, but... Even then, I don't think her episodes are among the first to be brought up when one discusses gems from the Capaldi era. I mean, ask anyone to mention a great episode from the Capaldi era, and I think they're more likely to bring up Flatline, or Oxygen, or... <sighs> Heaven Sent? Yeah, screw Heaven Sent. All hail on the lakes us before the flood! <sighs> Robert, just do the summary portion. Hang on a second, earlier you said that her writing style, quote, strikes a strange chord for you. I want you to elaborate. Hmm, if you insist. I mean, to be more specific, it's not necessarily her fault. I think she does the best she can with the cards she's handed. I'm just a bit iffy on said cards themselves, specifically with Face the Raven. Here, Dollard was tasked with sealing the deal for the Doctor and Clara's toxic codependent relationship, bringing Clara's reckless streak to a climactic head and emphasising the Doctor's... how should I say it? uncontrollable simping for her when she ends up in mortal peril. Now, this is a hot button issue in modern Who discourse, and I may either be about to gain a ton of allies or be swapped under an ocean of dislikes, but I don't care for the Doctor and Clara's dynamic. Never really have. To keep it short and sweet, while I get the intentions for it to be this overblown Shakespearean tragedy where they're so bad yet so good for each other, I think their dynamic is built on incredibly shoddy foundations, and I've always found that the hostility and negative energy throughout their time together was too strong for me to ever really be invested in them. There kinda comes a point where watching two people ignoring all the red flags when they're so obviously bad for each other gets pretty tedious and you just end up screaming at your TV. Oh my god, please just go your separate ways! This is a show-wide issue across two and a half series, and I'm not pinning the blame for it squarely on Dollard, full disclosure there, but when she's handed the narrative point that's meant to be their dramatic emotional separation, like the 8th out of the 10 they had. One can't help but feel a bit frustrated at this when one is just so done with this stuff. This is what I mean when I said Dollard's writing strikes a strange chord for me because she is very clearly skilled at writing emotionally charged character moments, but I'm just kind of bummed out that her skills are being spent on a relationship that I've spent the last two, three seasons groaning over. Oh. Huh. Okay, well, you're wrong. Oh. Okay then. Well, on the other hand, at least I don't have a problem with the character drama in Thin Ice because I love Bill. Like, Bill is bae. But anyway! Summary time! So to sum everything up, Sarah Dollard is an extremely underrated writer from Capaldi's time. I just wish she had contributed a script to Series 8 instead of the transphobe, or the guy who gave a pro-life message. She'd be just as popular as Jamie Matheson, in my opinion. A fair assessment, I dare say. 
And even I, as someone who really isn't overly keen on 2010's Doctor Who, can see the strengths of Dollard's writing style and appreciate the craft that goes into it, and her two stories do help to paint the messy but contemplative picture that is the Twelfth Doctor's tenure. So, um, how do we finish this? Do I just go or something? Oh, I know. Let's make it like a dramatic soap opera where we have a disagreement and fall out. You know, make it reflect what actually goes down behind the scenes here at Universals. Great idea! So the second Doctor is bad, utterly god-awful, and I should know because I've only seen three of his stories. Also, the fourth Doctor era is terrible too. Why on earth do you love Leela so much? God, your opinions are so ass-backwards! And another thing! Uh, oh, um, it seems like the Atlantic is interfering with his connection. <laughs> Yeah, that's totally what it is. Ugh. Anyway, at least that's over. I really hope I don't have to convert any more of these videos into collabs because they are really taking a toll on- Hello? It's not over yet, Will. We have one more to get through, and I'm sure that you'll be heading for the hills on this one. <laughs> Face the Raven scored similar positive. Oh, uh, I ruined the take. Uh, you, from... I was, I was in the mood. You have ruined a take, Thomas Hayden James. You have I ruined a take. I fucking apologize. Tank.